Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about lipoprotein little a, very important entity. It is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease, completely independent of your lifestyle. You could be eating right, you could be exercising regularly, but you can still be at risk for premature heart disease and stroke especially if you've got family members who died relatively young age. So this is not routinely screened in standard lipid profile labs. But if you stick with me, we're gonna go through the details of what is lipoprotein little a, how we screen for it, and possibly some of the effective treatments that are coming down the pipe. So what is a lipoprotein? Lipoproteins are little fat transport vehicles in our body, and why do we need these things? If you guys remember from basic chemistry, fat and water don't mix. Fat bubbles to the top of water, and you can shake that thing up, and they still separate. The reason for that is all based in chemistry. Water is a polar molecule. Okay, water has a charge. One side of the molecule has a negative charge, the other side has a positive charge. So things that dissolve in water will have a charge themselves, like the ionic molecule of sodium chloride or table salt. Fat is a neutral molecule. It does not have a charge. And the reason it doesn't dissolve is because it doesn't interact with the water, they separate out. I can actually demonstrate that polar nature of water using a very simple at-home experiment you can do yourself. You take a little plastic rod, uh, you rub it with a cloth, you take some of the electrons off the surface, you put a positive charge on that rod, and you hold it up to a, a very thin stream of water, and you can actually watch that water bend around the rod because of the attraction of the positive and negative charges, all right? Fat doesn't do that. You can pour fat down a little stream, put something charged up next to it, it's not going to move at all. So we need some kind of vehicle to basically transport that fat through our body. And if we didn't have that, the first time you ate a fatty meal, the fat would be absorbed into that bloodstream and it would cause little fat globules to build up in the small capillaries, block our blood vessels, and basically we would die. The first ice cream cone that we ate, we'd be dead, okay? So that's not gonna work. So we need these little transport vehicles to pass the fat around the body and distribute it for energy purposes. That's what the lipoprotein is all about. And the lipoprotein is made up of a molecule called a phospholipid. That's the key to the lipoprotein. A phospholipid is a molecule that has a charged head, a phosphate group in this rounded portion up here, and it has these two tails hanging off the bottom, which are basically fatty acids. So if you look at this molecule, the charged end would be attracted to the polar water. The fatty end dangling off the bottom would be attracted to other fats. So inside this sphere of these lipoproteins, we have these triglycerides and cholesterol esters and all these other fatty molecules that don't dissolve in the polar plasma of our blood. On the outside, however, we have these charged phosphate groups which are highly attracted to the charged water molecule. So these little lipoproteins float through the body in the polar nature of our plasma and help us distribute the fat through the body without clogging up our little blood vessels. Now, around the outside of these lipoproteins is a protein band called an apoprotein. That is basically the carrying card or the identifier of that particular particle. For instance, apoprotein capital A1 is the marker for HDL cholesterol. You guys may have seen this on your labs. HDL, high density lipoprotein, is also called the good cholesterol. And that is the lipoprotein that transports cholesterol from the periphery back to the liver to be processed. Whereas apoprotein capital B is a low density lipoprotein, which we have come to know as the bad lipoprotein. Low density lipoprotein is associated with cardiovascular disease and stroke and stuff like that. But HDL and LDL really aren't bad or good. They're just in the body doing what they need to do. But if you have too much or one or the other, it can be problematic. And the LDL specifically can cause cardiovascular disease. Lipoprotein little a is a subset of the LDL particle, the bad cholesterol. 
And basically we have a disulfide bond that connects that apoprotein B, the marker around the lipoprotein, to an apoprotein little a, a series of repeating folded protein structures called Kringles. And the interesting thing is, the number of Kringles is determined by your genetics. So if you have a longer Kringle chain, your genetics basically say you're going to make this number of Kringles. If you have a shorter Kringle chain, then your genetics say you're only gonna make this number. The problem is the number of these particles that the body produce seems to be inversely related to the length of that chain. And it kind of makes sense because if you look at this, the longer the chain, the longer it takes to make each one of these particles, correct? And so it's going to have fewer number of circulating lipoprotein little a particles in the body. The shorter that chain, the faster the body can produce all of these, and the more of these particles you can have. The problem is these lipoprotein little a's are highly atherogenic, okay? You can be eating right, exercising regularly, doing all the right things, but your genetics are fighting you because these things can cause cardiovascular disease in patients as young as 30. So let's talk about the labs. The lipoprotein little a, like I said, is not a standard lab when you go and get your lipid profile, you have to ask for it. And it's a little confusing because there's two different units that they use when you go and get these labs. It can either be milligrams per deciliter or nanomoles per liter. If it's milligrams per deciliter, the ideal number should be less than 30 milligrams per deciliter. If it's nanomoles per liter at your particular lab, it should be less than 75. And as you can see, it's easy to convert from one to the other. Basically, milligrams per deciliter is two and a half times less than nanomoles per liter. So if you take the 30, you multiply it by 2.5, that gives you the 75. So depending on the lab that you go to and the number you get, you can convert from one to the other. I wanna to talk to you about treatment. Currently, there are no effective treatments for lipoprotein little a, and that's probably why we don't screen for it regularly. The only treatment that is proven to be effective is something called phoresis, which is very invasive. They put a big needle in your vein, they draw the blood out of the body, they clear these particles out of the body, and through another needle that goes into another part of that vein, that blood is pumped back in. And you have to do this once or twice a week to reduce the lipoprotein little a particles sufficiently to have any kind of clinical effect. To date, what we do in these particular patients, if they really have a high lipoprotein little a and at risk for cardiovascular disease and stroke, we maximize existing lipid therapy. So these patients are maximized on statins and niacin and all the medications that seem to lower the actual number of lipid particles that we have in our body. But the great thing is there's a lot of genetic therapies coming down the pike that show extreme promise. It seems awesome that they can do this, but they can actually block the production of this lipoprotein little a. And there's two different therapies that are being studied. One of them is called an ASO or antisense oligonucleotide. And the other one is called an ISRNA, which stands for small interfering RNA. Basically, both of these little particles are antisense sequences of nucleotides that bind to the messenger RNA in our body, and they prevent the production of the lipoprotein little a protein. So if you have something that can actually block that production, that translation of the RNA into that series of amino acids, you can effectively block lipoprotein little a. The drugs that are coming down the pike are pelicarsin, alpsarin, and zalalsarin. These medications show extreme promise. They actually can reduce the amount of lipoprotein little a in at-risk individuals up to 94%, and that effect seems to be um, sustainable for about a month. So very exciting stuff. And we may have a treatment option in the very near future. So there you guys have it, lipoprotein little a. 
So we've got a treatment that's coming down the pike. You've got to ask your doctor to actually include this in your lipid profile because it's not going to be done automatically. It's lipoprotein LP with a little a in parentheses. The great thing about lipoprotein little a is it's genetic and it doesn't change after the age of five. So you just need to get it one time. Once you have that, continue your active uh, lifestyle and your healthy eating and you should be good to go. If you like this content, subscribe below. If you want to hear more topics, comment in the section below and we'll try to get that online for you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.